morning is a very special morning for us at Hillview because today our pastor decided to join with God and then he bid us come and say, come on girls, I just want to spend a moment with you. So you responded and here you are looking beautiful. I hope you're not worried about the kids, whether they had breakfast or not. You're not worried about the husband, but you're just here in this moment. And I'm going to challenge you, just take a moment behind the mask, wherever you are, and say, God, here I am. Find me here. And there's something specific just for you. It's going to be different to what he has for me. It's going to be different to what he has for somebody else. So just take a moment and ask him, Lord, meet me here. Speak to me. He knows you. He knows your heart. He knows the desires of your heart. So he's here just for you. It could be through what one speaker is going to say or what the chef is going to say or what the pastor is going to say or just that sister next to you smiling at you. So this is a fest of its kind at Hillview and thank you ladies for coming. Let's make the most out of it. Enjoy, smile and just be yourselves. And to our beautiful visitors, sisters, you make us real. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Just you deciding to, to trust us with your 250 and your precious time and coming here says a lot to us. We are honored, we are blessed, we are happy you are here and we're going to have a great, great time together. Well, in the same spirit, without ruining the mood, I'd like to welcome our first guest, Mrs. Priscilla Ndadi a renowned lady, a well-learned lady, a lady who has specialized in life insurance and financial markets, you name it. We are looking forward to learning a lot from you. The floor is yours, ma'am. Good morning, Queens. How are you? I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. It is an honor and a privilege for me to be standing before you today. I'm hoping that um, you will learn something from me. Uh, and as Pinky was saying, uh, oh, Pinky is such a sweet sister. We come a long way as well from many years ago uh, in, in our journey in the Lord. So just a little bit about me. Um, I am 40. I have three children and I'm married, I think we all know. <laughs> and <laughs> I've, 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 I've grown in the house of the Lord from a very tender age. And um, before I met the Lord, in fact, I was born at the cattle post in a cattle crawl. You might not believe that. And in abject poverty you know, and it was very hard as I was growing up financially. What's the word? Every day. And, um, you know, um, but when I was 12, I met the Lord and I gave my life to Christ and he took me to his word. And it was in his word that I discovered um, a lot of financial concepts, the Lord taught me the issue of money. And, and the reason why I wanted to learn and, and learn it directly from the word is because I really wanted to move away and move me and my family away from the status of poverty, you know. And, and that's why it was quite important for me to do that. And today, I think uh, I talked to you from my experiences, not so much what I learned. In fact, I've never learned financial planning as a certification. I'm not a certified financial planner, uh, but I have learned financial planning and man man management from the word of God. And it's, it's such a great time for me to engage with you as, as women of God, because I believe Ritla uh, Rutana in that sense. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm feeling excited. I don't know about you, I'm feeling over the moon, but I just want to get a sense of how is the room feeling. Uh, Pastor, if you could please 
uh, put up that for me. Uh, everyone who's got a smartphone will just have an engagement session as we go along. Please go to menti.com, menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Please put the code 9370-7819 on menti.com, 9370-7819. By raising of hand, please let me know if you are there already. One, two, three. Anybody else? Please indicate how you are feeling in just three words. In just three words. Is it excited? Is it overwhelmed? Is it awesome? Is it fantastic? How are you feeling this morning? And you just click submit. Someone is feeling beautiful, someone is awesome, that's lovely ladies, great, excited, keep it coming please, exhilarated, that's lovely, awesome, lovely, peaceful, I love the peace, and somebody's expectant, I think that's lovely, somebody's anxious, somebody's anxious, may the Lord meet you at your point of need in that anxiety, the reason we meet to, is to minister to one another as women, and uh, if you're feeling anxious, may the Lord meet you at a point of need. Speak to someone, because sometimes these are the things that result in mental health issues, but I'm glad she's able to voice it out. Uh, like I was feeling very pressured earlier on as well. You know, lovely, lovely, beautiful, hopeful, curious. She wants to know, oh, what's going to come out of this day today? Yes, hopeful, exhilarating. Thank you very much. I hope everybody has had the opportunity. If you haven't, in the interest of time, we will leave you behind. Thank you. I hope you, you had a lovely time experiencing that. You can always do it um, uh, in your own spare time uh, or, or in your own settings. Uh, I have titled our discussion, Conversations of the Past. Let me see those who've got their purses. We are going to have conversations with our pairs. Why the conversation of the pairs? What is the purpose of the pairs in a woman's life? So I'm holding two different purses. This one, just cards. Medical aid, driver's license, omang the wax, right? This one, get the coin. Lidipula. And there's a thing about me and money um, that I learned as I was growing up. Hake ba madi. Sonsor kya pake je sing. Hake na hoza 200 ke mo ke mo thaka thaka nyaha ra kama 20 pula. Because money listens to your spirit. Money follows your actions around it. So, how can in the same manner, it behaves like that. It's it's okay. So, so the reason I use two purses is because it, as I was growing up, I struggle. And so the coins actually um, press the microchip on the, on the card and it just messes things up. Yes, so that's my reason for that. I think which is fine. Why must we have conversations of the past as women? Why must we have conversations of the past? And I started my, my preparation looking at the studies that have been done globally. I think Rilev uh, Asadi financially, as, as research was being done in the UK, it shows that 49% of women don't really know how compound interest works. So if in the first world where we look up to, 
Half of the women don't know of compound interest. What more of us in the third world? In the US, 32% of women, and it's a smaller percent, percentage for men, with low financial literacy rate, are likely to engage in problematic credit card transactions. So you find that that's what the study says, that is in the US, 32%, uh, and it's a lower for men. Why? That's why we must have conversations of the past. 85% in Malaysia, in Asia, of non-married women, they save informally compared to 75% of men. In Poland, and I chose these countries just because of the diverse and the representation of the different continents across the world so that we can learn something from them. 60% of the Polish, Polish women, they do not know that high investment returns attract high risk as well. So, risky investments and expect to get returns. Okay? Let me bring it home. In, in, in December 2021, just three months ago, Fitch Solutions did a research in Botswana really to establish what will happen post-COVID in our country. And it, the research indicates that household spending in Botswana is going to go up by about 5.9%. Why are we spending so much as a country, as a nation? However, the labor market conditions are expected to remain tight, showing little signs of improvement. What does this mean? What could it mean? Could it mean you might be laid off tomorrow? Could it mean there might be no opportunities for elevation in your workplace? And what would that mean to your purse? What does it mean when you are laid off? Are you in a right state financially to take it up for the time when you are still looking for another job? I'm talking to the employed. But if you're running your own business, what does that mean in terms of the possibility of income from these people that are getting laid off coming to your store or to buy your services if you're not selling tangible goods? And what strategy are you going to put in place if that happens? And it, the research talks about where we spend a lot. You find that it's on food, drinks, clothing, footwear, housing, utilities, transport, comps. Those will account for 72% of total household expenditure in the next three years. That's too much. Why are we? changing clothes so many times. Why? And that's where our expenditure goes. So the, the research divides between what they call essential, which is the deep green, and the non-essential, which is, which is light green. And it shows that housing, utilities, transport, are the top three areas where the expenditure goes up. What in our homes is consuming our money and should it continue to consume our money as women? So really that's why I felt this conversation is very close to my heart because of also what happens. I'm a woman, I also love clothing. <laughs> we love to look good, you know, we do. But it's time that we just looked at it and said, why? We need to ask ourselves those questions. And I had to ask myself, what do I do when money is not enough? Some of the decisions I've made in my life, I was in deep assessment of my financial status and I said, 
I can't continue like this, you know. Um, there was a time I was bankrupt, living paycheck to paycheck, and um, then got an overdraft facility from the bank, and every month I was always on overdraft. I said, no, it can't continue like that. Am I talking to anybody? Can somebody relate? And um, I remember when I was 28, I decided I'm relocating out of Habroni. I went and I lived in Francis Town because I realized mm -mm, something's got to give, this can't go on, I've got to break the poverty line, and I'm not going to do it if I'm going to continue in this manner. What did I do when I was 26, 27? I started working when I was 24. I had, a, I had a green suit, I had an orange suit, I had a gray one, I had a black one, I had a yellow one, all the colors of the rainbow, <laughs> right? <laughs> and handbag after handbag after handbag after handbag. So I had a, what do you call it, consumerism mentality? And I, um, I, the Bible then took me to cliches that said, how wise to analyze and interpret things. I don't know if anybody has seen that scripture. So I started to analyze my behavior towards money. And uh, I realized I'm spending in the wrong things and I'm spending for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Ladies, it's gonna take a deliberate action to stop that. Where do I begin? Where do I begin the past conversation? Let's say I'm getting married. Is there anybody single here? Show of hand. Let's say somebody proposes you. Where do you begin the past conversation? How do you know if this one is equally yoked financially? <laughs> How do you know? Where do you begin? Because oftentimes, and I think as I was growing in the, in the body of Christ, do not be equally yoked. From the perspective, then we marry. We realize, I made, I made a financial mistake. I am unequally yoked financially. So what do you do as a woman? And as a young woman, the first thing that I did when I met, met Miss Standard, uh, fortunately, I had come back from Francis Town. I had gone in exile and fixed my financial mess. And he was finding me in a very comfortable state. In fact, uh, um, when I met him, I was buying a house from him. That's how I met him. I think you are the only people who would know this. <laughs> Count yourself, please. So I was buying a house from him, and I was sitting on the table. He wanted me to buy the house for half a million. I said, dude, this, 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 I have observed in the kitchen. The, the, I'm going to have to do more plumbing here. I'm going to have to do this, that, that. So let's, I'm putting this price on the table. Okay? So why am I sharing this with you? Because I had to go on a journey to nip setting things on the bat. And by the time I met uh, my husband, I was already financially seasoned. So then I asked him, what assets do you have? Let's do your balance sheet, net no. <laughs> your personal financial statement, okay? I brought mine, I said, you just saw that I bought a house from you. <laughs> so it, he, it was in the dealings that he was in trouble, oh, this woman. Okay, so I guess I caught his eye there. Anyway, story for another day. <laughs> so, so then, um, you know, that's, we, uh, that's how I, I was able to start that conversation because of that. But how do you start it as a young lady? Just out of varsity. And you meet a guy, he's killed. Nicely built. All things externally, they align to your, to, your, to your desire for a man, right? Don't marry anyone before you have the past conversation. Do not 
in capital letters bolded with inverted commas before you have the test conversation. I don't have time to do this justice. Um, Okay, all right. So what do I do when my partner mismanages family funds? I talked about being unequally yoked financially. And really for me, the first thing, uh, if you didn't have that past conversation before you marry, it's just gonna translate into the marriage. Marriage doesn't change anything really. The true sense of the word. For those that are not married, marriage doesn't change anything. So, to make a discuss And then other, another question that I know as women sometimes we go through very difficult circumstances in our lives, major losses, it could be the death of a loved one, divorce, disability, widowhood. How do you bounce back? For me, these are major financial events. Because death requires money to bury a loved one. And Mobotswana, we've got this whole big thing. Thank God for COVID, it changed. I hope it remains the same, where you just come in and you don't offer food to anyone. During the next thing, I know, man, this thing must change forever. You know? And if, if, if you've ever had to part ways with a loved one, because of divorce. How do you bounce back? Because divorce can really be financially straining. If you're going to involve the lawyers, lawyers don't come cheap. They charge millions per hour, thousands per hour, sorry. And if you had a partner who was financially strong in the home, and God forbid COVID takes them, you become widowed. How do you now bounce back? and start to run the family again. I live with a motto in my life where I say I am financially single, though married. I am financially single, though married. What do I mean? I should not so much depend on my standard that even as a woman. As a woman, you must be so financially independent that should anything go wrong, you can stand on your own. I carry Bible I don't know what tomorrow may bring. I'm just paraphrasing the scripture here. So you don't know who right Larunzole Hamunaha the car accident. The life is lost. I get. That's what I mean. I'm not saying that's how you should think. I'm just sharing my life uh, with you. You will pick what works for you and, and so on. But as women that are married, I've spoken to the singles, the, the, the ladies that are married, how, this is a question I asked myself, how am I going to influence financial decisions in this marriage? financial decision I know it's vineyard as a woman I said to myself every financial decision no matter how small and big I will be participating in it. Are you participating in financial decisions as women in your homes? I don't need an answer. It's just a question that I asked myself, how do I influence? Granted. We are totally different. That's why the uh, physics says, unlike poles are tracked. Like poles repel. It's important that mm. 
You must have your own opinion as a woman in the home about financial decisions, but be very pursue peace with all men. You, 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 you then, in, in that diversity of your thinking and outlook with your husband, then decide which battle do you pick, which one do you fight. Okay. So those are some of the questions that I asked myself um, and, and some of the answers. The, the three quotations that I live by as a woman, not everything that can be done must be done. If you like, you can note it down. This is one quotation that I told myself, just because I can do something, it doesn't mean I must. So, so for instance, today, this is a church of Hillview women, right? Just to give an example. And I'm speaking to you today, right? So you can then say, I'm doing what? I'm preaching, isn't it? I'm preaching or I'm teaching according to the fivefold ministry, right? But does that mean because I've come and I've preached, I can go and open a church? Okay, let's say I can, but does it mean I must? You understand what I mean? And, and, and I had to have this quote in my heart because every time and this was one of the things that helped me get out of my financial uh, embarrassment to self. Um, Black Friday or Black Week. There was a stampede, I think, a couple of years ago by Game City. Those who live in gaps will remember. Again. What does that show? Black Friday. It's time to do. It can be done that I go to the shops, but must I? What will that do to your purse? Every time before you decide on a move, the question, what does this do to my purse? Perception, the second one, breeds reception just as it can bring deception. What does this mean? In, in, for me, I said, this talks about my mental outlook on things and on life. Oftentimes, the, the natural thing to do is to criticize things that you are limited to in knowledge or those that do not seem to are in line with your doctrine or your, the way you look at things, right? So I use this statement to say, on an ongoing basis, whether daily, weekly, whatever, I must be challenging my mental models towards money, right? The way I perceive money can bring money to me. However, the way I perceive money can also deceive me towards money, right? Bahumi Balebula as Borabok. Hono Hiragala Lokoma Hangal. Mobotana, at least the quickening cake is full to take. In a lower Hellahamo to Ilimuhum. What a lake rabble gold. I started to question that perception and I was like, uh uh. The Bible says he was made poor that I might be rich. This richness is not the richness of the spirit. It's the richness of material things. Because in any case, the Lord was not materially poor. Right? Or, or, you understand what I mean? This other thing, how ka you a wealth? Right, so that's that's the, the 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 quote that I said. I'm going to engrave this in my mind. Comparison, the last one, is the thief of all joy. The grass is green on the other side, but you are failing to note the bill, the water bill, is equally double. That grass doesn't maintain itself. There's a gardener who's been paid. There's a water bill. 
soil, everything to go with it. When I was born, Jarata Haro, Elizabeth, Lawe Fela, Car Le Fela last one over, feel out of place. No, relax, relax, Molomon Ali, Genia Haroma Life. I guess. Please, if you can, just know, jot down the following scriptures for your own benefit. In the interest of time, you will read them uh, on your own. Proverbs 13, verse 11. Proverbs 31. Yeah, you can just take a screenshot. I love Proverbs 31 because it's the, the, the area that I used to learn. What must I do as a woman? Get up before dawn. Hello, how can I have a little at Timodikobo? Your day is wasted. You are never going to have ability to catch up with your day. She plants, she buys, she plants, she makes, she helps, she sells. These are the seven uh, adjectives. Is it adjectives or verbs? or nouns. These are the doing words that I would like to share with you to say, please go and assess yourself against these seven areas. What are you buying? Yare, she buys, she, she, she inspects and it, it buys a field. Do you have a field? How's in a team? Kiko Paro Hana Hana Habit Hara. A field. The Bible says a field. She plants a vineyard. Baba Berkelangavi, my sister Berkelagavi, before Atlamo Habrunun and Nakobo Hatakai. Zet Sidi Lamulum. Why is he? Mutotla ba hilo a three bedroomed house. I do a la two hundred and fifty. I see kaya kaya kovera galaga vivo manadia. Then there's a whole land at the back. Ya ija mi mutwa kora kaspina shiko chupis. You are enriching the Ramachandrans. Let's stop. The land is free. Just plant. Okay. She makes. That's the other thing in in Proverbs um, thirty one. What are you making as a woman? And then Yare, she makes and she sells to the merchants. What are you selling? Are you selling anything? Are you selling something? Let me see those who are selling. We're not trying to embarrass anyone. Um, if you're not selling, please, it's time to look at that, OK? helps yeah, she helps the poor how often have you gone out of your way to help the poor right uh, i have to be disciplined with my time uh, brenda and uh, sakao please if you could just pass uh, we're going to do a little exercise okay uh, we, uh, i call it a personal financial assessment that we're going to do together so you're going to get a sheet, um, the journey to mastering the past conversation starts with a personal financial assessment. Where are you in the affairs of your mind? Okay? So we'll just do that little exercise. So I'm just rushing. So you've received um, a sheet. We're starting with part one. Go to the area where it says part one. So in part one, you read the statement. And then you give yourself one point for every no answer. So you start with ticking, answer yes, yes. Okay? And then, how to have a score no thing? What part one here? Oba one, how to have a score. Okay? Let's, let's do this in two minutes, ladies. Do you avoid taking financial decisions? Be as true as possible.
Do you doubt your ability to make financial decisions? Do you allow others to make financial decisions for you? Do you feel that you are always in debt? If you are done with part one, you can go to part two. Do you feel that you are financially successful? This is the real conversation of the past. So, so are we done with part one? You're done with part one, you can just move swiftly to part two. Do you feel that you are financially successful? In part two, what we are doing there, for every answer that you say yes to, you give yourself a one. And be as honest as possible. Are you in control of your money? Are you in control of your spending? I think we saw research from Fitch Solutions earlier on that our spending will go up 5.9% this year. Are you going to be among those? And remember, 5.9 is just the average. So there are those who will be doing 15%, there are those who will be doing 2% and zero. Do you have a savings plan? Do you know how much you owe? Whether you owe a bank or a couple of people? Do you invest in unit trusts? Or it should have said, do you have an investment plan? Do you have a retirement plan? And when is the best time to plan for retirement? It's when you are in your 20s. Are we done? Do you have an estate plan? OK. So please add all the scores in part one and in part two, and then you have a combined score for the two. So you must have a single score for part one and part two. Add both of them and come to a singular score. So in menti.com, we're going to select So you're gonna show, like I said, we're not doing this for individuals, we're doing a team. We want to understand the financial assessment of the Hillview Menti, right? So we're going to have a look at where are we as a team. The code is there, go to menti.com. The code is 9370. 7819. Let's do this swiftly, ladies. And then you just select where you fall. If you are between 0 and 9 points, you just click that, that one. Come on, ladies. There's more than 20 of us here. I see only four people have responded. Keep it coming, keep it coming. So we've got two people on 0 to 9 points. One person on 10 to 15, three on 16 to 19. Let, let, uh, Rasan, sir, Rasan, it's a Only six women have, have responded here. Are you struggling with something? Oh, the internet is slow. Askis. Okay, Aridi Rajana. Um, on, on zero to nine, apart from these two, how many more do we have? I'm gonna ask maybe Pinky if she can record the scores in terms of number of people per point. Zero to nine, raise your hand. Two, four, two, four. Okay, that's so five. So Pinky just, oh, six. So Pinky, that's eight for zero to nine. If you, if you um, did it on, on the web, don't raise your hand, okay? Yeah, because I just want Pinky to, to help with the scores there. And then 10 to 15 points, that's three, 
um, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six people, so that makes it seven. Pink for us there. 16 to 19 points. Don't raise your hand if you did it on the web. One, two, uh, two plus three, that makes it five. 20 points. Those who are at 20, so with, without any showing of hand pasta, I hope it looks like we don't have anybody at 20 so we can go to the PowerPoint presentation. I'm just gonna explain what these numbers mean uh, for you um, to understand so that you know um, where we are as, as, as the church. Um, the next slide was that one, number 11, slide 11. You can just, um, oh, I've got four slides to go. You can just put it on, on that slideshow mode. Thank you. So I promise you f five, eight minutes and I'll be out of your face. Just bear with me. If you are in the zero to nine points zone, it means you are locked in financial dependency and that cycle needs to break. We need to make deliberate steps to break that financial dependency cycle. It means that your finances are likely in a chaotic state. Probably in severe debt and you don't know how to get out. Severe, I'll leave it to you to decide what severe means, but generally you are in debt. If you are in nine to 15 points, you have a hit and miss approach to finances. <laughs> and you have no real plan of bringing everything together. Remember I asked earlier, do you have an estate plan? Do you have a retirement plan? Do you have a savings plan? It's important to have the plans. Faith without works is? That's exactly what it means. 16 to 19 points, you are well on your way to controlling your financial future. I think you deserve a round of applause, Queen. <laughs> you have financial confidence and basic knowledge. The only thing that you need is just a little bit more structure. Just a little bit more structure. Uh, we didn't have anybody on 20 points. But if you're on 20 points, woman, you are sailing. You are sailing. Okay, so um, I'm gonna move quickly in the interest of time. Uh, Pink, I hope you will do that. You've got the team view. Um, when the time is right, I'm giving you a 100-day challenge as this team. I will come back after 100 days. I want to see some people in 20. I want to see those who are in 0 to 9 having shifted to 9 to 15 and the like. I'm giving you a 100-day challenge, and I will come back after 100 days. So one of the scriptures we looked at earlier on was Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. I wish somebody could read it for us. But it says a river, I don't have uh, the time. It says a river flowed through the Garden of Eden, watering the plants, right? And it branched into four other streams, a river. What is a river in the context of our past? Is it is money, all right? It is money. So money from my employer, flew into my bank account. We are contextualizing now, right? Mm -hmm. And that money is supposed to divide into four other streams. Mm -hmm. Do you have four additional streams if you are employed over and above your money from your employer? <laughs> These are conversations of the past. Do you have four extra streams that you have built from that which you received from your employer? All right. What could those four streams look like and what could they be? 
I call it invention income. What do I mean? It's that which you invent, your own innovation, that which you craft yourself. What have you? Remember Proverbs 31, she makes. That is an invention income. She makes belted linen garments and sells to the merchants. Do you have an invention income stream? Number two, investment income. That salary you get from your employer, you must every single month make sure 20%, bare minimum, goes towards investment. 20% goes towards investment income. I don't have time to do this justice, but we can talk about what investment vehicles are and what, how to choose what and the like at, in the 100 days to come. And then there's what I call the intention income stream. You'll see in the next slide. What are you passionate about? These are the things you intend. Okay? CV. I guess we don't do that anymore. Rene Riri. I cannot have a name, say name, age, marital status. I don't even know why we're writing those things. <laughs> At the end, whatever on the section here, hobbies. La Rakolai. Singing, watching TV, doing all sorts of things. And, and I think it's all, and it's all when I look back at that section of the CV, and I never converted that singing into a stream. How many of you, women in praise and worship, where are you? Have you converted that? If you haven't, the Lord will take that music away. Limpo, get testimony. Then the last one is incidental income. This is, you know, it's, it's around royalties, um, and, and we'll talk about it um, uh, when we do have time. Um, what I call, I think we, one of the questions was, how do I bounce back financially? Mudumu feeling to to use as a woman. I call it the three H. The head. The heart. And the hands. These are three levels of financial bounce back. And if you were to ask yourself, you have everything. I like to say, women, you are entrepreneurial powerhouses, mm -hmm. just the way you are. You just have to ignite. Mm -hmm. What's in the head? Let's talk about it for a minute. What's here? There are a lot of things. The brain, the eyes, right? The ears. I get. So usually the first step, of financial bounce back is what your ideas convert them to a stream. I'm watching time. The heart, the second level. These are things you're passionate about. Have you converted your passion? You can start off with Ketile, but you can't get that forever on that passion. The hand she makes. What are you making as a woman? What are you making? Um, I, I, I wanted to bless someone here. I think there's somewhere in the cards, it should be written, those small cards. Check if it's not written, you are a winner. Um, okay, can I have that box? Just want to take two minutes to show somebody how to use the hands to make a perfume for themselves. If you've got that, please, you are a blessed lady, come through. <coughs> Thank you so much. You are a chosen resident, generation of oil and food. So I make a lot of things myself with my hands. Oh, it's a I
promise you it's gonna take five minutes if you're quick. Okay. But it can take long. Okay. But you look like you're smart. So you'll take shorter than that. So she makes, right? Yeah. From Proverbs. And she does what she sells. So I don't know what we bed spread in your cadidir. So we'll just do that which can take us five minutes. So one of my streams, which is the invention income component of what we saw now, I make perfumes. I use what we call essential oils. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm just working on being a certified essential oil practitioner uh, where I will be able now to use certain devices that will read your body complex and say this oil is the right one for you and not that one. Mm -hmm. So that you, ju you don't just go to the shop and get an oil for the sake because then you do what is right for you. So I, I, I'm just going to teach her how to make with her hands, and no more buying store perfumes in my house, guys, <laughs> for me at least. Um, so, I will just show you how to do that. Please put 10 drops of each oil inside that bottle. <laughs> no, 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 Dali. Let me demonstrate this. So, um, you, the drops will come out by themselves. So you just lift it up, you'll see one. Okay. So just like that. Just like that. You take this one. She is making with her hands the third level of financial bounce back. You, we're gonna rely on you to count there, sister. It has to be 10, great stuff. You're doing so wonderful, come on, give the encouragement. <laughs> and then I'll just help by opening this for her. So this one we call a carrier oil. Essential oils have to be diluted because they are potent and um, we don't want skin reactions. That's why we dilute them. And they're natural products, they're pure. So from a chemical composition point of view, um, there will not be any um, reactions if you have diluted. All right. I think I am left with Two, two minutes on the podium. And then we are done with all the oils, so she's going to fill it up. Great. So what you're going to do, you're just going to take this over Kurumela. What could you do in three minutes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three minutes. That could generate you invention income. Yeah. It is yours to keep. Oh. And all that you do, you can just roll or at the back of the neck, on your temples. Oh. We're looking at Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Mm -hmm. I was amazed when I read the scripture because I was wondering, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, 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 if somebody could just open it for us there quickly. Catch all the foxes, those little foxes, before they ruin the vineyard of love, for the great vines are blossoming. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pink. Catch the little foxes. It's like you It recognizes that. There are certain things that will spoil love. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that will spoil your love with money, 
or your relationship with money. And we got to catch them and catch them real fast. I told you how I caught mine. The first place I've identified, the kitchen, women. The kitchen is a big fox in our lives. We eat and throw. Again. Korotlavo regile, rice krispies, cornflakes, oats. How do we catch the kitchen fox? Can I let last Bonnie is six years? Ne? So last, is it last week or the week before? He says, Mommy, please bring Rice Krispies. Okay? Mm -hmm. You mean with your piggy bank money? <laughs> so because I then, I think it's the point three little <laughs> So So I then taught them, you do something, for you to earn money. Habas na ja kadikotlele. There was a tendency to take it and throw in the zinc. I said, not in my house, guys. Who do you expect to wash after you? Okay, they are young, so they will really train up a child in the way they should go. Not an adult, a child. So You after eating, you wash your plate. So the girl is quite, you know, girl children, lights are on a resomos. So the boy, then the girl will come and wash after him. I observed for, for some time and I said, I'm going to nip this in the bath. So the girl would, even hake samurai resi, she'll come, have an odd kakota, kakadian nasin, she'll pack them. Mommy, I fixed your room. I need my 10 bucks. <laughs> so if you make up your bed, five bucks. If you do this for me, if 10, 15, hell yeah. Then I bought the piggy banks. So would end on that basis, OK? Then the boy says, please buy uh, uh, crispy rice. I said, with your piggy bank money. He said, no, ma'am, with your money. <laughs> Then I said to him, my money does not buy Rice Krispies when there are conflicts mm -hmm. in the house. Mm -hmm. He zipped his mouth. Mm -hmm. That was the end of the conversation. <laughs> so this is one of the foxes, women, that I encourage you to catch. You know, to the point that bari impoverisha for our hard-earned cash. We must say no. It's our money. It's not theirs. We are just stewards for their lives, but it's our money. We work hard for it. Eh. You know, those of you who are running your own business, you know you toil a lot here and there. Sometimes the money comes in drips and drops. Sometimes it flows in large sums, you know. So, so how can God like a six-year-old? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And then the wardrobe. Aria se se mbo sister. In my concluding remarks, Aria se se, why are you having 40 dresses and you are only wearing 10? The other 30 once in winter, once in summer, once in fall. Why? No more time for slaying. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Not when it impacts your purse negatively. Not when it impacts your purse negatively. Um, what I did many years ago, I was in France, I was in the city, 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 I was in the all those colorful suits, I was in the city, because 
Khaper na lidi kini kena lidi this thing. Hongwe lo na you are not. Nick back then nick na this thing. Ah, get kawo na kasi tu orangey wiki li wiki. Why not? It's yours. It's yours. You bought it with your own money. Why can't I wear it every week? In fact, I went to a certain festival last year, in November. Kini kya per musi so mwa no orange. That dress I bought it when I was thirty-five, and last year I was forty. At the end of the year. Five years later, it's still going strong. Mm -hmm. So what's wrong? <laughs> why do I need to buy clothes? Why are we buying clothes, ladies? That's a fox. And for everything you spend in that line, you must have 20 times in your investment account. Because I'll tell you what, research has shown when you are in retirement, 60% of your expenses are towards health care in retirement. So how long are you going to spend your money? How long are you going to spend your money? How long are you going to spend your money? How long are you going to spend your health care in retirement? We'll talk about that in 100 days. Can you tell me what you're going to do? Thank you.